Ladies and gentlemen, on the 16th of July of 2021, the European Union Regulation 1020 of 2019, which is also known as the Market Surveillance Regulation, will come into force. The new rules in the regulation may result in many products being banned from entry into the EU market. Will your products be affected by the new rules? How can you prevent your products from being banned? In this presentation, I hope to answer some of your questions. Regulation 1020 of 2019 aims to strengthen market surveillance throughout the European Union and to ensuring that only safe and compliant products can be made available in the EU market. Now, most of the provisions of the regulations are aimed at improving the procedures and capacities of market surveillance authorities in the EU member states. And that is probably not so interesting for you. However, chapter two of the regulation directly affects the businesses of non-EU based manufacturers and exporters, and maybe your business too. Chapter two tries to resolve a problem that has been developing over the last five to 10 years. The trend has been that product manufacturing has moved further away from the end users. When I was a child, most products we bought were manufactured in our own country or in one of the neighboring countries. Nowadays, even low cost products are shipped from the other side of the world. Secondly, with the rise of the internet and particularly the success of e-commerce platforms such as uh, Amazon, uh, Alibaba, uh, AliExpress, consumers are now used to buying products online. More often they are buying straight from foreign sellers and foreign manufacturers. The products are then shipped to them with postal services. Unfortunately, often these products are not complying with the regulations and safety standards in the consumer's country. But it turned out to be difficult for the authorities of the European Union countries to hold responsible persons accountable. The reason is that the EU regulations were written with the traditional supply chain in mind. Here you see an overview of a traditional supply chain and the persons or economic operators in the supply chain that have a responsibility for product compliance. Here they are indicated with the light gray background. So parties in the supply chain are traditionally manufacturer or private labeler, which is considered to be a manufacturer, um, importer, an authorized representative, a distributor, and then it goes, uh, the product goes further down the, uh, the chain to retailers and finally uh, to the end user. Here you see what currently is taking place after consumers discovered buying on e-commerce platforms. Basically, the whole supply chain is surpassed. This also means that according to the traditional EU regulations, the end user would become the importer. However, this is not ideal because the consumers do not have expertise on product compliance and product safety rules. They also do not have the resources to conduct conformity assessment and to ensure these products comply. This is why the market surveillance regulation introduces new rules. So let's look into what the biggest challenge is that the market surveillance regulation introduces for non-EU based businesses. The challenge is introduced in article four and from the 16th of July, 2021, products may only be placed in the EU market if there is an economic operator established within an EU member state. And it's the task of this economic operator to take care of the tasks in paragraph three. As we will see later in the presentation, these tasks are related to the product compliance. 
What is important to note now is that according to paragraph five, the limitation only applies to products that are within the scope of the EU directives and regulations that are mentioned here on this slide and in the paragraph. I will show you later for which products the limitation actually applies. So the economic operators that have to be in place in the EU are a manufacturer, an importer, an authorized representative, or a fulfillment service provider. And here you also see that in a graphical presentation. Now, what does that mean for manufacturers and sellers that are located outside the European Union and that sell products through websites and e-commerce platforms? In this case, there typically is no manufacturer or importer located in the EU. Therefore, in order to avoid products from being banned from entering the EU market, the non-EU-based manufacturer or seller has the following options. One, open an EU office or subsidiary. Two, start selling through an importer that is established in one of the EU member states. Three, appoint an authorized representative. And an authorized representative is a person or a company that is appointed by the manufacturer and mandated for the tasks that the regulation requires. And we will come to those shortly. And the last option is to use the services of a fulfillment service provider that offers product compliance services. For those of you who are not entirely sure on what that term fulfillment service provider means, here you can read the definition. And what is important to note here is that the service provider does not take over ownership. Otherwise, they would become a distributor. But uh, they offer a combination of services, at least two of the following services. Warehousing, packaging, addressing, and dispatching. And the regulation specifically mentions that postal services like DHL or uh, FedEx, and, and the like, or freight transport services are not considered to be fulfillment service providers. Now, which products may be blocked from EU entry due to the market surveillance regulation? The following products are examples of products for which the requirements apply. Electrical equipment and material within the scope of the low voltage directive, electronics and active components within the scope of the EMC directive, electrical and electronic equipment within the scope of the EU ROHS directive, electrical and electronic equipment within the scope of the EU eco design and energy efficiency uh, labeling regulations, uh, such as um, power adapters and computers, uh, washing machines and refrigerators. Radio equipment, so that means electrical devices containing radio frequency broadcasting and receiving technologies such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. ATAX equipment, so that means equipment intended to be used in potentially explosive atmospheres machinery and outdoor noise equipment, toys, construction products, personal protective equipment, for example, helmets, uh, safety shoes or gloves, pressure equipment, simple pressure vessels, gas appliances for cooking and heating purposes, recreational craft such as yachts and personal watercraft, measuring instruments and non-automatic weighing instruments and pyrotechnical articles. You may have noticed that these are all products that in the EU are required to be affixed with the CE marking. Now let's look in detail what are the responsibilities of these economic operators. The tasks are described in paragraph three of article four of the regulation. 
First, is to verify that the declaration of conformity and the technical file with the product's specific compliance files exist and ensuring that these files can be made available to the market surveillance authorities upon their request. Secondly, to be the single point of contact within the EU for the market surveillance authorities in case they have questions about product compliance. Three, also they have a legal responsibility to inform the market surveillance authority if they have reasons to believe that the product poses risks, for example, because there has been a serious incident. They are also legally required to cooperate with the market surveillance authorities in taking corrective measures or taking actions to mitigate risks. And finally, their name and EU address shall be provided on the product, its packaging, the parcel or accompanying documentation. And this is for traceability purposes so that consumers and market surveillance authorities can find the contact details easily. All of these responsibilities are related to the verification of product compliance and helping the market surveillance authorities to find and take measures against non-compliant and unsafe products. It is important to point out that the new rules are not including responsibility for product compliance itself and product liability. Product compliance and product liability for damages caused by a defect in the product remain the responsibility of the manufacturer and parties within the product supply chain. As discussed, when looking for solutions to prevent the CE marked products from being blocked from entering the EU market, the following has to be taken into consideration. Now, first, opening an office in the EU is expensive and also complex from a regulatory point of view. Secondly, nowadays, many exporters specifically choose not to work with an EU importer. The e-commerce business model is attractive because it allows cutting a big part of the supply chain and that way keeping the price low. And thirdly, it has to be noted that currently most fulfillment service providers do not offer product compliance services because it requires specific expertise and therefore is outside the scope of their competence. For that reason, probably the easiest solution is to appoint an authorized representative. Also, platforms like Amazon are requiring their sellers to register who their representative, or as Amazon calls it, EU responsible person is. So what would be the qualifications you would like to see from your authorized representative? Considering the main task of the authorized representative is to communicate with the authorities on product compliance, it would be good for the authorized representative to actually have a good level of expertise on EU regulations, standards and conformity assessment procedures. We recommend you to also consider the country in which the authorized representative is located. For example, now after Brexit, the authorized representative should not be located in the United Kingdom. The authorized representative should be a well-established company, which is also not going to disappear whenever there is an issue. And please note that PO box companies and virtual offices are not allowed and they will actually may cover a batch to be flagged. The authorized representative should have the necessary infrastructure in place to be able to communicate with the authorities efficiently. And they should be professional in their communication and also knowledgeable in order to avoid that cases will get escalated. You would like to consider the security of the storage of your files by the authorized representative. And obviously you're looking for an organization that provides you with good customer services. Allura Group has been providing authorized representative services for 20 years. 
we are ready to work with manufacturers and sellers that take product compliance and product safety seriously. At the websites aluragroup.com and eureresponsibleperson.com, you will find more information about our authorized representative services. Contact us. We will be glad to provide you information about our services and to see if our companies are a good fit. Thank you very much.